Hello, Nancy, is that you? No, it's Lynette. Oh, hi, Lynette, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? <laughs> now I'm okay. An hour ago, I had a black screen of death and Nancy Asonio calling me that her computer isn't working. So it was a little stressful, oh. but I think we got it all figured out. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Yeah, my husband is on his way to uh, Nancy's house to drop off a print copy of the um, board material as we speak. Oh, you're oh, okay. joining us twice. Yeah, because uh, my computer doesn't have a uh, mic, so I have to call in, but I can see you guys on screen. Oh, got it. Okay, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> How are things at the bank? Ah, busy. We're still very busy on this side. So I can imagine. Yeah, yeah I went to Union Bank uh, last week. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it, it's a little difficult to get in because they don't let, like ours, we open our doors and let people in. They're just social distancing. For them, they have someone at the door and they only let them in when a certain amount of people. So it does take a while to do any type of oh, transaction to go in there. Because you don't... I went to the one in Monterey and it's huge, but you go in there, there's only like two customers and like three employees. So it's, it's kind of like really, it's, it's like real quiet, like a pin can drop. But, you know, if you're doing that all day, you don't hear any hustle and bustle. But finally, <laughs> I, we, I got Thank the check. You. So. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a crazy uh, situation. I didn't realize it was going to be this. Well, unfortunately, I was worried it was going to be this nightmare, but I was hoping it wouldn't be. So thank you for doing that for us and for, oh, no problem. you know, now we don't have this issue anymore. Yes. Yeah. So that's a good one. Um, if you want to, if you're open to it, to maybe just, oh my God, someone's calling me. One second. Oh, that's my husband. One second. Hi there. Okay, yeah, I got it. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, 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 okay, I'm already on my call, so it's a little difficult. I'm sorry. Okay, love you, bye. <sighs> yeah? Hi. I'm frozen. Hi, Nancy. Hey, how are you doing? Let's go to the beach today. There we go. Yay! I'm uh -huh. staying in my bedroom, so I guess you guys just have to see my, my bedroom behind me. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm going to go get my tea. I'll be right back. Sounds great. Give me one second. I'll be right back. So let's see who's here. So is, is Lynette both the phone number and, ah, got it, okay. Yeah, Lynette is both. Nancy Osonio is also going to call in. She called me about an hour ago and uh, we both have had crazy computer problems. I had a black screen of death an hour ago. <laughs> it's so terrifying, isn't it? You know, I apparently did the absolutely wrong thing with my MacBook Pro over the weekend. I downloaded the new uh, operating system. And apparently that's not really such a good idea. <laughs> okay. So far, I've only, you know, terrified myself a couple of times and I've been able to get out of whatever it was that was terrifying me. But before I say anything else, Julia, your hair is adorable. Oh my God, thank you. It is actually... <laughs> no, you know... <laughs> Oh, no. It's got, at least I'm much more aware of how spiky it is around your face, and it looks very nice. Oh, thank you. I, I got it cut, actually, finally, because it was way long, and I decided I'm off, off with that stuff. And so, great. Oh, well, thank you. Ooh. You're welcome. Yeah. And Lynette, I can, I, I can only see your picture, but it's a wonderful picture. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, I know that Aviv is not going to make it. He sent me a, 
um, a little bit of a frantic email this morning, poor guy, um, because of the uh, tax deadline on, on Sunday. Sunday was November 15th. So today, since this is the next business day, all of the taxes for, I think, nonprofits have to be in. And so after this meeting, I have to rush to Selena's. Um, we have to go pick up our return for the foundation. It all has to happen today. <laughs> I mean, it's, Yikes. it's a whole bunch of stuff on his end. So we, I was hoping he would be able to present the financials, but it's not going to be possible. But he says he's going to be extra super duper prepared for the next meeting. Sounds good. Sounds good. Oh, well, let's see. What did I want to ask you, Judy? Oh, uh, this meeting on Thursday, who is Evelyn? This meeting on Thursday. Let so Evelyn, Evelyn, oh, Evelyn is um, one of the students that we work with. Okay. Um, <laughs> we work with a lot of students right now. We work with a total of, I want to say, 23 students. Wow. Yeah, some of them are. Um, grouped together. We have this one professor who got really excited about working with the library and she teaches two courses and she has students from both of her courses working with us. Uh -huh. So Evelyn is in a group. Um, I have to pull up the spreadsheet to see who else is in her group. Um, hello? hello? Oh, that must be Nancy. I recognize the number. Yeah, <laughs> well, something worked. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, everybody there? Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Three, oh. three board members plus Julia. So we're, we're And I think there. Hillary just joined, if I saw that correctly. Hillary, yeah. I just put her mic off. Yep, I'm here. Hi, Hillary. Good. So, yes, to finish my sentence, Evelyn is one of those students. Um, and I can look at which course she's in. She's either in the um, social movements class or in the social action writing, I think. I'm not quite sure what she wants to know. Do you know what she wants to know? I think she just wants to interview you about your experience as um, a board member of our library foundation. Sounds fine. So it'll be questions around, you know, what got you excited about library, I'm guessing, I'm guessing. I have not seen the questions, uh, but what got you excited about libraries and, um, you know, Maybe why did you join the board okay. and, and, you know, stuff like that. I think I can handle that. <laughs> oh, I, I figured. I figured that uh, would totally be possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a couple students who've asked me as well. And since I have so many of them, I can't hold 23 inter inter individual interviews. So I well, told them. She, I, it seems to me she's using we when she talked. And I didn't know if that was the royal we or if maybe she's no. going to be in on the call. <laughs> it is not the royal we. She is part of a group. Okay. And um, oh, someone else. Oh, Ron. There is Ron. Wonderful. I'm going to add Ron. Uh, I can look it up. Uh, let me just find my spreadsheet really fast. And then I can tell you who else is in her group. Okay, Julia. Oh, I, I've got all that. You might as well have the information. What the heck? Wrong spreadsheet. I'm still looking. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, aha, here's the roster. Okay. Mm, almost there. Here we go. And Evelyn is part of a group of three. And she is in a class called social movements. Um, and it is Evelyn. And then she's in a group with someone called Sophia and a guy named Joseph. Okay. And they are doing just general library research. I guess the professor has sort of um, done a little bit of the um, research beforehand and has basically told um, each student group which bucket they're supposed to focus on. So we have another student group that's focusing on specific library services, including questions about um, how we're serving homeless people. And then I think, um, uh, the one that we connected you with specifically was asking for 
volunteers around the library universe. And so that's why we felt like that was a good fit. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Well, let's see. Hi, Hi Roland. Roland. Oh, nice Hello to there. How's everybody? Good. Good. <laughs> I got one, two, three, four board members and Hillary. I don't know anything about Kelly, Andrea, or Harry. Hmm? Do you know about Sherry? Sherry Klein? I do not know about Sherry, unfortunately. Um, it, funny enough, one of the students that we're working with at CSUMB is um, a former employee of Pinnacle Bank and is going to try and get Sherry to be one of the interviewees. So I'm like, yes. Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> so we're, we're helping her back in. <laughs> well, what do you think? Do you want to try to get started? Do you want to wait a while? Um, you know what? I think we should, we should get started since um, it's not going to work out the way that we had it on paper since Aviv is not able to join us. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to change up a little bit anyway. Okay, well then why don't I bring the meeting to order? And I think that perhaps we don't need to look at the minutes because we can't approve them, is that right? That is correct. I mean, if one more board member joins, then we will we be able to go back to that. Sure, we can do that. Oh. And you mentioned that Aviv would have to talk to us next time. Yes, so I yes. did send him all of the financials, um, but the bookkeeper couldn't get them to me until Saturday, so he didn't have enough time to look through them properly, A, and then B, as I already mentioned, today is um, the day after November 15th, which is one of the tax deadlines, and so he has a lot of uh, work stuff on his plate and said he was not going to be able to make it. Exactly, meeting. okay. Well, then I think that would bring us then to the executive director's report. Not Right. I did want to quickly uh, make sure that you are aware. Um, I, I am unfortunately a little bit behind with the quarterly payment, but we are going to get the check ready for the libraries. And I just wanted to quickly share my screen to show you so that you're all aware. Screen. There we go. So here you see, um, I'm from did not do on time uh, the, the quarterly payment for August, which is a, the largest payment that we have. It includes the, the regular quarterly payment, which is made up of funds for summer reading, homework center and literacy. And then we um, are paying the 50% down for the bookmobile and the San Lucas fund. So these are all, these two have been sitting in our accounts for a while, which made them look very nice but they're now going over to the libraries. So uh, just wanted to make sure that you are aware of that, that this is what's happening. So the quarterly payment is late, but on its way. Is yes, correct? yes, yes. So, so Julia, are you going to do August and November in one lump sum? No. <laughs> when when are we doing November then? Um, maybe next month. Okay, okay. okay. It's uh, definitely coming, um, but give me a little bit of breathing room, please. Okay, okay. So August is coming, and then we'll st we're still getting what was supposed to come in November, but it might yes. come in a month or so. Yes. Got it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, that was what I wanted to show you about checks. Do you have any questions? So um, will we be able to resume the schedule we had hoped after these two payments are made? Well, that then ends the year. And then we have to, um, first of all, make sure that we sit down and look at our budget and um, decide what we're going to be able to do for next year. Things are very much up in the air. I am uh, reaching out to each of our funders right now to just see if we can have a conversation uh, to find out how and if their priorities have shifted to then also understand how we hopefully fit in there. Um, the worst thing that we can do is basically send in a grant application right now for the same old, same old and be rejected because they have switched things because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm taking it step by step. Um, I am expecting a reduction in funds coming in for next year. 
just overall from what I've seen, unfortunately. Yeah. Does that include operational funds, operational yes. grants? Yes, okay. they're part of it. They're kind of built in. The operations is right. built into mm -hmm. the funds that we get. So, yeah. And Ju Julia and I had a meeting about the requests and the requests are gonna look a little bit different. Um, I've asked, is it okay if I share what we talked about, Julia? Yeah, okay, yeah. so I asked Julia how, because normally I would have said your January meeting or February would have been your reports from last year and then our requests for 2021. We're gonna take homework and break it into pieces. So do a request to get us through May and then wait on, you know, what's, what's the rest of the school year gonna look like? Because we don't know yet. And then I, I've asked all the, I've asked literacy, homework centers, summer reading to build requests in tiers. So like a basic tier to operate the program that is down by about a third from what you were able to um, grant us last year. And then additional tiers should the funding be available. And then I asked them to put in when they would need to know. So for example, for summer reading, they may have a basic tier that includes a certain number of programs. And then an additional tier, should you have the funding available for more live programs? And then I asked, and put in by when you would need to know if that money was coming or not. So that, um, because a lot of our planning, we start, like summer reading, we start planning in February, March. So if Allison only knew that we had the basic tier of funding, she can plan and then we can always add. That's the nice thing is, is more can always be done, but that way they have, a, they have a floor to stand on to do the planning. So your requests are gonna look a little bit different. You're gonna get final, you're gonna get reports on everything. What we did this year, how the money was spent, the impact of the pandemic, um, outcome measures, anything we can collect, you're gonna get that in reports. And I've asked Julia, she can schedule me for January, January and February, but I told all my folks, we need to have these documents ready to go for January to send in to the foundation. So we're gonna plan a little differently for you, including planning should you have a, a year without um, as much operating funds or as much grant funds as you're used to having. Thanks, Hillary, that's very helpful. Yeah, now that we're getting to the end of the year, um, it's it's a shame that Aviv is not able to walk us through the financials, but um, now we can actually see how things have been impacting us. And uh, I mean, that was to be expected since we didn't have words and wine, um, but there were also a, a couple other ones there that um, you know happened right whenever COVID happened, we, we turned in the request, for instance, for the Community Foundation, it's always due um, the first Friday in February. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> by the time they granted their funds, they had significantly shifted their funding and we did not receive a grant like we have been for, ugh, I wanna say the last 12 years. Wow. And so, yes, we have been funded by the Community Foundation for, ugh, yeah, easily 12 years, possibly 15 or longer. Yeah. And so not receiving those funds was not something I expected. I was expecting maybe some sort of a reduction, but a complete zero was not something <laughs> that I had <laughs> planned for, to be honest. And so those are things that I'm trying to um, uh, sort of I don't want to say prepare for, but at least not have happen in the same way by talking to the funders now so that we know how to then shift the uh, grant application so that they fit within their guidelines. Um, and that's why it was really helpful to already have this meeting with Hillary to kind of get that information from the libraries on how they're moving things around so that I can then pass it to the others. Have you heard from the uh, Community Foundation or the Weekly or part of the Big Give? Um, I don't know what you mean by having heard. I guess we're already jumping in my board report. We can totally oh, do that. <laughs> do you want me to pull it up on the screen? Uh, it is. That's what comes next is the executive director. Right? So I guess it's a national. Whatever those do. 
natural jump into it. So let me just find my paper version and now I'll pull it. While you're finding it, I want to say that I think that um, the information about the foundation in the glossy MC gives is just great. I was very happy to see it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, have you seen it? I have, I have not seen the glossy uh, mm, thing. I don't either. Hmm. But I am happy to know that that's All right, I'll go get it. Okay, I'm going to stop share right now and I'm going to share again. Where is my, here is my board report and share. Here we go. Can you see it all? There we are. Yeah, okay, good. So I have been very busy with the grant writers um, working on grant applications because uh, we are now getting ready for the stuff that is due at the beginning of the year, which is quite a few. So we have the Monterey Peninsula Foundation, which is always a big one. And uh, on Wednesday, I am scheduled to talk with the program officer to make sure that our application uh, fits their guidelines. And then we have Pebble Beach Company Foundation and the Echenique uh, foundation. So those are all things that I'm working on. It's a lot of back and forth. And um, as I already mentioned, the student projects with CSUMB are going very well. It's quite a few students. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it's, we're, we're making great progress. And um, later on during the meeting, I was going to, I pulled out two of the um, drafts that we have already received of some of the uh, projects that I thought would be nice for you to see. They're two very different projects. Um, <clears throat> one is what's called an explainer video. So I had some students actually focus on one of our online databases and um, kind of just go in there, become familiar with it and then film their screen and comment on how you get into the system, what you can do with it uh, and what it's good for so that we can then have this as something that people can find if they don't know what to do, uh, you know, if they're looking for specific information that they can, they can be taught on how to use this particular database. And now MC Gives, we are one of the um, participants again this year and um, it's been, we got off to a good start. We actually had um, both a foundation and um, a group of individuals already uh, give us a challenge gift. So we started out with a total of $4,000. So that's really exciting. And uh, I checked and yesterday we received the first two donations of $25 each. So nice. it is growing. The reason why I really like this campaign is because um, Every year since we've done it together, um, we've been able to grow it. And I'm taking out the 75,000 that we got this one year that was just really lucky timing that we were able to funnel it through. Um, so even without that, each year we've been able to grow it steadily and we've been able to grow the number of new donors who are giving to our libraries, which is just as important. Um, and hopefully we'll do it this year too. And that takes me to the next step. So the changes that we're doing this year is um, one of the grants that we received while I was in Germany was the um, fire relief grant from the community foundation. So that was a separate grant that was not on, uh, it was not a typical pot of money, uh, but we were able to apply for it. And I built in funds for greater outreach into that particular grant and they granted it. So as a result, we are now moving forward with this project that I presented to you. Um, I want to say it was in August um, about the Google ads campaign. Mm -hmm. And one of these campaigns is going to be for people to donate through MC Gives to the um, Foundation for Monterey County Free Libraries. And so hopefully that'll help drive up donations. <laughs> and uh, yes, Courtney, um, Julia, tell everyone page 40. And hey. in the big glossy, oh. yeah, that's where it tells about the foundation. So if you want to, you know, ah, that's page 40. Okay. okay. So let me write this down because I actually have not. Is that, is that the paper copy? It's, it's a paper copy. It's glossy. Um, I have not. Last been last week, it was in last week's weekly. And I don't know, you know, whether they'll continue to 
send it out or you know what. But anyway, hmm. it's a big glossy magazine that they do every year and we're on page 40. Yeah. We're also referenced in the very beginning where they list all the organizations. Referenced in the... But the write-up about our, our big idea is on page 40. Oh, yay. Yes, that's the, I have to find that. I have to get myself a copy. I always love looking at that. Yes, it, it is. It's fun. It's fun to look at the budgets of all these different organizations. I mean, some of them have a lot more money than I would have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> right? To see that, that is always very interesting. Um, so, but I'm hoping that it will not only help drive um, po potential donors to our MC Gives campaign, um, because we're just going to be a very, very small sliver of the uh, 10,000 uh, monthly dollars that we're getting in free Google Ads money. Um, most of it obviously is going to go to the libraries and Hillary is already working with her team to uh, set up a whole bunch of different campaigns so that if someone is searching for something that is in any way related to uh, any of the services that we offer through the libraries that they will be directed to the libraries. So we might see, I'm hoping that we will see whoop, a big increase in people getting certain books, book packs, using databases, all of that. So fingers crossed that that's going to work. Um, yes, and that is pretty much the gist of my board report. Thanks, Julia. Okay, then let's go on to the librarian's report. Okay, so I sent you bunches of stuff. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> question. I just realized okay. since Andrea joined, we have enough board members to do the minute minutes. Oh, go oh. do the minutes. Do business. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Sorry I'm late. <gasps> oh, we're glad you're here, Andrea. Do you need me to pull up the minutes on the screen? Yes. When you're sharing your screen, um, I, we can't pull anything else up. <laughs> oh, never mind. Then I will not share. I'm going to stop sharing and let you guys pull it up yourselves. Okay. Well, since I wasn't there, I can't make a motion. Yeah, and I wasn't either. And sorry, my internet's super weak right now. So that's why I'm not on. Oh, no worries. Yeah. I think for minutes you can if you weren't there. At least in, in my organizations, the minutes are oh, we can the still exception. Move. You can move and you can vote, even if you okay, weren't there. Well, I uh, make a motion at the minutes from October 2020 <laughs> be accepted. <laughs> Is there a second? I'll second it. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Is there any discussion <laughs> of the October minutes? <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> yeah. All opposed. I think we just okay. passed the minutes. Right? <laughs> oh, and, oh, I it was a very quick meeting, meeting anyway, because, you know, I, I wasn't, I mean, I was on the other side of the pond, so. So I think we can go back to Hillary's okay. report. Okay, so I sent you bunches and bunches of stuff to read this time. I, I got it together to actually write stuff, and most of it was flyers of um, programs we're doing. The mm -hmm. only change I have to report since I wrote that was we're adding days to the charge up service. Marina and Castroville are each adding a day. They started at one day, see how it goes, how easy is it to set up, you know, what's the demand, and they're adding a day. So a new flyer for that um, will be going out on social media with the added days. Um, but it's going well. Uh, definitely a needed service. People who used to come into the library and then plug in their laptop, plug in their cell phone, charge up their iPad. It's really needed. And then everybody who has been given devices for school or for work, but is not at reliable housing or reliable electricity, you know, they can no longer go into a coffee shop and sit and charge right. up or a library or their workplace in a lot of places. So we're happy about that. We are talking about expanding the service and pricing out more of the camp batteries and extension cords and such so that we can add the service to other libraries. 
the service is a combination of that equipment, which is easy to acquire and move, and a safe outdoor space to put it, because there's some libraries where the outdoor space is the sidewalk and the parking lot. And we don't want to encourage people, you know, come unfold a folding chair in the parking lot and then put them in an unsafe space. So for, for some libraries, this may be a service we move elsewhere, like to an, a nearby park or, you know, somewhere where it's, a, but it's still a library service. It just becomes an outreach service. Um, we are still awaiting for firm confirmation that Soledad and Castroville are going to host permanent testing sites. And by permanent, we just mean they take over a space to offer testing five days a week on an ongoing basis. We still don't have confirmation for that. The health department had to apply to the state for that. And last we heard, they had sent in their application and were awaiting. But you're going to see lots of pop-up testing, drive-up testing, walk-up testing, two days here, three days here, and expect quite a few of those sites to be libraries. It's an ongoing project. So other than that, any questions about anything or programs or plans or any questions? Yeah, Julia. Um, now with the election behind us, uh, I know, and I actually used the um, Dropbox of the Marina Library. Uh, do you have a sense of how that went? Was it, was it a very popular service? It was incredibly popular, especially right when ballots were mailed and then right before the election. It was like the wave of the people who did it right away and then the wave of the people who waited but did not want to vote in person, didn't want to go to a polling place and exchange their mail ballot for an in-person ballot. The only, um, once we realized how often some of them were going to have to be uh, emptied, our only issues were scheduling, you know, because the elections office would send out teams to go to bunches of ballot drops and collect. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they would visit a library and we weren't there, you know, but that's when they were in the area. So it was just scheduling. And then there was only a minor confusion at Soledad on the day of because Soledad High School was also hosting a polling place. Okay. Mm -hmm. As was Castroville, as was Marina, but for some reason, the, the, the poll workers at Soledad thought the ballot drop was confusing and started taking down the signs, and then our staff said, no, they can drop here, it's an ongoing ballot drop, but the elections office was there to resolve it, and all was well, and uh, they were very happy that we were able to provide the service. So I think we definitely, if asked, would do it again. It Could was not that hard. Could you remind me how many libraries had that service? Um, I want to say it was seven or eight. Right. Um, it, and it was where they needed. It's <laughs> so if they, if there was like, like Seaside wasn't used because there was a drop at Seaside City Hall, which is right mm -hmm. next door. So they didn't need us. Um, so it was in areas of the county that they needed another drop site. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I dropped mine in the library too and went in and I checked it online. It was a piece of cake and, and everybody said elections was good to work with and the, the, the issues were minor and all overcomable. Yeah, I think that ballot tracks was an, a wonderful thing that mm -hmm. so many people could mm -hmm. find out where their ballot went. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to say um, thank you so much, Hillary, for connecting and reconnecting me to B and then her staff we're working with um, service learners. It sounds like the service learners have been helpful, um, but with all of the twists and turns of just helping students meet this part of their required curriculum remotely, it's been a challenge. And every partner that you know has come up with projects, it's just been really helpful. And just thank you, thank you. Oh thank sure. You. And well, we're now I trying. You know, just as we figured out, we don't have to reinvent the wheel on some things. We're now back. Wondering, of course, what's going to happen with the schools, um, although now it's looking like shutdown is pretty much what's going to happen. Yeah. But, um, well, and, and, and doing some of these projects remotely, what you think should be really easy turns out to be not, and not. what you think is going to be hard turns out to be easy. So right. it, it's, it, we, we're doing our, our one project with one of your service learners about trying to get administrative control over our Google um, 
sites, you know, mm -hmm. over our branches in Google and with Yelp. Oh, yes. But to have confirmation, they had to call the site. That's the rule is, is, and there's an automated phone call that goes out. You have to answer that the phone number that's on the record of the site, and then you get a code, and then that code has to be typed in in a certain amount of time. And <laughs> coordinating with curbside hours and then the staff knowing that you're going to get a call or you got to write down the code, and then who do you send the code to, and it has to be sent within 20 minutes. That turned out to be the hardest part. Mm -hmm. and, and now a bunch of postcards are in the mail, so now Desmond has to wait for the postcards to come before. It. So you know, that, that's the thing of like, this is going to be easy. And no, it really no. was not. <laughs> so, yeah. so everybody being flexible is part of how we're getting through it. And the students are flexible and we're flexible and it's all, it's all working out. I think we're going to have a lot of successful work done and hopefully a lot of learning going on for your students. Yeah, well, and, and, and thanks to the foundation too. 20, that's a record. It's 23. Like, <laughs> 23, that's, that's quite the record. We do have a midterm survey out and it's also been really helpful for partners um, who've been really honest and said it's taken more work than we thought and actually, or the needs that they provide need on-site service learners. And we were awaiting a really important decision from our office of the president about the possibility of like the lowest contact or no contact service. And the answer to that, unfortunately, is still no. Mm -hmm. Um, unless the student happens to be employed with your organization or is receiving a paid internship, then an exception will be made because it impacts employment. But otherwise, we're going to continue remotely for another, what, six months. So. Good to know. Um, Andrea, do you think at the end of the meeting we can quickly talk? I have a couple very specific questions about service learning sure. and the students that I have. Just wanted to make yeah. sure I catch you before you... Uh, uh, go down, back down the rabbit hole of <laughs> risk management and what? Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So did you guys have any other questions or did you want updates on anything else um, that I can provide? Very good. Okay. What's the latest in Parkfield? What's going on in Parkfield? They are as open as any small branch is. So doing curbside pickup two days a week there are wirelesses on, um, curbside print, fax, scan, copy. Um, school, the school next to them is open. It has one of the exceptions because it only has five students. So <laughs> yeah, they're, they're Shandon School District. And so that school is open and they bring the students over to browse through the patio glass doors. And then the, so they, they, they browse through the glass and point and then the staff checks out their books and, and gives them to them. And, uh, um, but they are as open as uh, Pajaro or Aromas, you know, or San Lucas or San Ardo is. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, and, and um, we're trying, I, I sent um, Supervisor Lopez pictures from the inside and said, we really did try, we have, we have swag we would have given you that had an April opening date on it, but we're ready to open. <laughs> you know, basically we're as, now as open as any other branches. Wow. Great, no. Well, I guess we're ready to move on to committees, Julia. Oh, yes. Okay. So I thought I'd give you an update on words and wine. I wasn't able to work on it while I was in Germany, but now that I'm back, um, I did have a very informative um, talk with the events planner at the Monterey County Fair, whom I called, uh, just to find out if we're able to uh, possibly use that space for an event. And I just thought I'd give you a little bit of... Um, uh, yeah, what I found out. So the arena where they're co uh, currently holding the, um, the, the movie screenings holds about 60 cars. Um, the lady said you can maybe squeeze in another five to have a total of 65, but no more. So that sounded good. If we just wanted to show a movie, the option was that we basically buy out the show that they have already planned, and that would cost us $1,800. Um, and then we would go ahead and sell those tickets ourselves and the movie would be shown. And I said, oh, you know, we kind of had a little bit of a different idea. How would that work? And um, if we wanted to have um, basically everyone sitting in their cars and then have a socially distanced panel, 
we could do that. Um, we would have to rent out the space and it would be a formal rental agreement and that would start at 3,500. Um, she said the price depends because um, if they're able to uh, have additional events on that day, they don't have to charge us as much for the rentals. And so that would br bring the price down. Um, so it depends on what day we would pick that. Now, of course, I asked, can we book something for, I don't know, spring, early summer next year? And she said, well, right now we are only booking between now and December 13th because we don't know how things are going to look like. And um, she suggested that I contact her again, maybe at the beginning of next year, how to, to find out you know, if they're still doing the movies and how things are going to look like. Uh, then because she really couldn't tell me. And I don't think we can <laughs> pull off <laughs> getting this event together between now and December 13th. No. <laughs> A little unrealistic, yeah. <laughs> I mean, even if I work day and night, I don't think we could pull it off. So, but I, I definitely so, thought that was some good information. And for the show, if we showed a movie, uh, we can show any movie or how does that work? So the movie is the movie that they have licensed for that day. We would be able to maybe uh -huh. get the licensing no for a movie that we would want to show um, that might have uh -huh. impact on the price. I'm happy to call again if I couldn't think of a movie that would sort of, you know, work with, um, well, maybe Hillary has some ideas on like a really good cool library movie um yeah so. I think there are well movies. i mean if, sure they if, are. If, if, is your audience like your words and wine audience would be adults like yes. like dress up and have a date night mm -hmm. right but just versus a bring versus a pile the entire family in the in the station wagon and so you got to something to like, that we need to consider yeah because um i've done movies in the parks mm -hmm. um but that was aimed at you could bring the whole family and you wanted something that would make everyone happy. So like the Pixar movies worked super well. However, Disney will, will be a lot more in the licensing and I don't know how they license. So, so they could give you advice to say, I, in my experience, Disney was more restrictive and cost more. But if, if it's like a, you want your words and wine audience so this is aimed at adults to kind of have an adult time. Like, are, are, pe are people going to be allowed to drink in their cars or like, you know, yeah. so like when, once you have your audience, I think you, and maybe they could send you a catalog. They could say, here's how we license. Here's where you can look up your options. Like, do you want an old fashioned, like a classic black and white? Do you want a musical? Do you want, do you want this to be a short movie? Like, are you going to stick to under an hour and a half? Um, do you want like a rom-com? Like, yeah, you know, and then, and then you could decide, do you want to stick like it's not going to be rated R? You know, all, all these options, but maybe ask them how they license because they might be able to just give you a catalog and say, here's what we can get for you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Julia, this is Lynette. Hi, Lynette. So I went to, um, hi, I went to the, uh, fairgrounds when they were offering the movies um you know they have like certain ones that they'll offer they did have like um beforehand you can choose like different packets uh like for your snacks they have like a family packet and everything like that but they also had for the adults a, like a wine packet so it'd be a, a bottle of wine with cheese and salami and things like that so they did have um pre uh snacks beforehand that people can order uh, per car um and they were serving wine on that and then um, I did receive an um, email from Pack Rep. They're actually having concerts at the fairgrounds on December 9th and 10th. So I'm going to go to that. They're actually doing like a live concert and they're limiting like the number of cars to go in and charging like $60 per car. So it'd be kind of interesting on what kind of concerts they'll be showing that way at the fairgrounds. Yeah, that sounds very interesting. Uh, wow, very cool. <laughs> um, Annette, are these concerts, are they live or are they move, uh, they're somehow videos or movies of concerts? It doesn't say, all it says on the email is driving concerts um, for, your, for your live entertainment. 
Um, and then they're just, they're just saying that it's $60 per car and they're limiting the number of cars that are coming in, but it's for December and 9th and 10th. Okay. And does that and include food? food? Uh, it, does, it does not say, at least on the email. I could find out more information. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, the live concert might be, have you ever seen those ads in movie theaters? There's a service that you can go to the movie theater and watch a concert. Mm -hmm. yeah. They used to play before movies on occasion and you could rent a movie theater, but it was actually being filmed live from the concert hall. And I know that other places with opera centers in downtown have also had that broadcast outdoors in an adjacent park so you can enjoy the opera. I don't know what they're doing, but it could be that that's actually a live concert somewhere. But in that case, they, they're, they're probably making enough money. You know, they're making the, the broadcast, the concert money back versus a movie. You don't have to set up cameras to film anything live. It's just running the movie. I don't know what it makes doing. it sound it makes it sound on the email like it's live but what they can do is because we used to go to this at golden bow it's recorded at golden bow and show it on um the screen but their email is keep on using the um the, the word live. verbiage live yeah yeah. Hmm. yeah i don't know yeah i think once you guys know what your audience is and what they can offer then i think looking at a movie catalog because if because if they're selling adult type packages like a wine and cheese box that you can get with your ticket, then you may want to say this is this is a fancier event. Like, do you want a so, so and and do you want something that is not available on every cable channel? Like, do you want to do something that yeah that, that that's not available readily at home where somebody somebody might say that's a great movie I haven't seen it in a long time. Or is the movie just part of the experience and you're not really selling the movie, you're selling the, the fundraising experience. Like, like at Words and Wine, you get dinner, but that's not, that's not why people don't go for the fabulous dinner. You know, you know what I mean? You know, the, the dinner is just part yeah. of the overall experience. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, there's uh, lots of interesting questions. Um, one thing that we definitely need to figure out, and I agree, is is the audience. Um, as a parent of young children, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, if we're trying to get people who have children, it's really difficult to get babysitters right now because of, you know, you don't want to invite a stranger into your home. You don't know about infection and all of that stuff. So, um <laughs> it's going to be tricky in terms of, um, you know, what sort of uh, audience we should go for. Should we go for plain adult or should we consider having maybe people come with their children, but then it's, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I just thought I'd bring that up. Well, Pack Rep's two concerts right now are a Broadway review and a tribute, rock and roll tribute on December 9th and 10th. Well, are those shows that they did at Pack Rep? You know, it looks like they're live shows, judging from their website. And it looks sort of like yeah. it's what they used to do on New Year's Eve or have done in New Year's yeah. Eve. Yeah, because I've gone to a, a lot of those and they, they've done it at the, I, I go to the Go and Bow one and they've done those particular tributes right, before right. during this time. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So they're going to be performing it live at the theater and, and then showing that at the fairgrounds? No, it looks like it's live at the fairgrounds. At the fairgrounds. Yeah, they use that oh, word okay. live. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then Pack Rep might have just bought out one of those one of those shows to then sell the tickets as 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 if it were Pack Rep. That's possible too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And then my other question is normally they're charging thirty dollars per car for admission to the regular movies that they have, the schedule, and their schedule goes through the end of January. Um, so if we were to rent the facility, do they continue to collect that $30? So that's basically where we have to buy them for, out. 
that's where we buy them out. Okay, yeah. so we're, we're guaranteeing the 60 cars capacity. Exactly, exactly. That's how that number comes together of $1,800. Right. Well, I love the idea of a concert. I'm open to anything. Hey, it's also worse, right? Yeah. Well, because the concert would also give us an opportunity to go on and do live fundraising. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah. Yeah. I like, yeah. Ooh, that'd be very different. Okay. Yeah. I've been to some memorial tribute, like celebration of life events lately online oh, that wow. included like a fundraiser to the person's, you know, fund of choice and it all integrated like live music by just local artists who knew that and it, you could just see it had such an impact on people. Yeah. But the, it was like this just really cool mix of, you know, somebody, you know, hosted it. It was just really, really moving, but also you could, I mean, everyone commented on how the live music just was what was people needed and we could all enjoy it from our homes. You know, I'm, I don't know anything about the local music scene, but I do get email from somebody named Kiki Wow. <laughs> and I think she knows the local <laughs> And so I think, you know, if we were interested, we might want to check in with her and just, um, I, I think she's very plugged in. Oh, do it quickly, because Kiki's moving. Oh, is she? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh. Yeah. yeah, she hasn't already moved. Uh-huh. Maybe but, she could refer us to somebody else who's knowledgeable. She's invaluable. Yeah. yeah. W would you mind reaching out be uh, to this? If I can. <laughs> Let me see if she's in my, if she's still in my email. I don't know. If not, I don't, I, I probably could figure, I mean, I don't really know her. I've met her like once. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I still have some stuff from her. I mean, I could try this. Uh, I have something from October 26, Kiki Wow's e-blast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's only the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, she does say 10 days until we move out of California. Okay. Oh, that has happened now. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm wondering if, even if, you know, if she would um, refer us to someone else. Or she might be able to facilitate from wherever yeah, she is. From, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think she's quite, is quite an organizer, right? Oh, yeah. She's an entrepreneur. Yeah, exactly. She's been a hustler for a long time. So, good sense. Mm -hmm. okay, so um, do you want me to email her or not? And I, I don't know. Be great. Okay. No, there's no harm. Why not? Yeah. Reach out to her. Okay. And uh, so we're interested in some kind of uh, uh, live concert, local, talented people here in, in Monterey County um, at the fairgrounds, right? And that's what I want to ask her about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it would certainly be a completely different way of, of doing words and wine. That's exciting. Yeah. Cool. Well, and then we, you know, depending upon the music, we can eliminate the choice between adults and or families. Right. Because it could just be both. True. Yeah. You know, parents with their kids. Yeah. It would be nice. You know how some movies really work for both audiences? It would be nice if we could figure out how to make music work that way, don't you think? Oh, I think so. I think it's highly possible. It's more likely yeah. than, because looking at the um, list of films that they're having their pop-up theater, it looks like they're all preset probably months in advance. Mm, and so exactly. we'd have a difficult time picking, you know, selecting a film that we would want to see unless they're open to negotiating with whatever their their video vendor is uh, on our behalf sometime you know, six months or so in advance. Well, they might have, I don't know how these services work, but um, they may have just a service that has a whole catalog. Oh, and sure. Yeah, and unless you wanted a new release or a high end mm -hmm. like, like uh, like a Pixar or a Harry Potter or something that they've put on Disney Plus, um, mm. 
they might just have a whole nice catalog to pick from. And, and I like, if you did a fun classic that you could put your kids in the car if, and you know, but it, it wouldn't be boring for adults. Adults wouldn't be like, okay, I supported the foundation, but I'm not, yeah. you know, actually, you know, like, a, I don't know, a, an old school MGM movie musical or, um, I, you know, it's just something where the kids would be like, okay, but you make it like, or, or an old school adventure. Like again, Disney gets in your way. I don't, you'll pay more if you want Star Wars, you'll pay more if you want, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. But I, and I don't know how private businesses work at all. I, I'm just speaking from getting it as a parks and rec license or a library license thing. But like we showed, we showed uh, one time in the park, we showed singing in the rain and it had enough dancing and music that little kids who were not at all following the plot didn't care because, because <laughs> occasionally they danced and sang, you know, um, the older adults were like, I haven't seen that in ages. I love Gene Kelly, mm -hmm. you know, and the only people who were bored were the teenagers, but that's not your target audience anyway. <laughs> <laughs> But a family could come and bring their little kids and basically they broke into song often enough that the little kids were fine. I, I like the idea of having something with, with music and whether that's a movie or if that's a live concert, um, that sounds like a very interesting idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go ahead and explore the idea with Kiki. And I can reach out to um, the events planner at the fairgrounds again and find out um, how they're licensing the movies mm -hmm. for these shows and, and, and what sort of catalog they have available or, or how that works. And so I can, I can report back on how that works. Mm -hmm. Okay. For some reason, I keep, thinking about the, I keep thinking about the movie American Graffiti because it's really old and I just looked it up, it's PG. And um, it, it's kind of about the same thing that we'll, we're doing, like we're in our cars the way they were in their cars at the drive-in, I don't know. But I will, I, okay, enough of that, I digress. I will contact Kiki. Um, and is there anything more that we wanna say about words and wine right now? Um, since this is about committees and um, Julia, you were talking about money, I wonder if it's time to convene the budget committee. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So um, do you want to just get something out to us, you know, to say, you know, when, when can we meet type thing? How about I do that? Since after this board meeting, I'm jumping into my car and drive to the office to um, do this whole audit thing with Aviv, I can ask him what his availability is, because I think that's going to be key that he is part of this group too. And then since I have his avail uh, availability, then I'll send an email out to, um, oh. <laughs> so that's, that's you, Nancy. Uh, and yeah. it is, I think it's Lynette. Uh -huh. Maybe uh, Sherry. I, I was going to say, I'll send it out to Sherry as well. Um, Ron, were you in that as well? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think so. Okay. Uh, am so I we'll missing anyone? Need the board to talk about the budget. <laughs> okay. So yeah. then I will. Once I hear from from Aviv and have his availability, I'll I'll send it out to you, and then you'll pick from the uh, choices that he has given me. Does that sound okay? That sounds fine. Okay. Let me just um, budget committee. Burp. And probably I should speak with uh, Lynette and, Sh and Sherry about the personnel committee and get something to you as we, <laughs> at the end of the year. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Anything else about committees right now? Oh, thank you for that link, Hillary. I just saw your email. I'll make sure I'll check that out and, and see after I talk to the um, event organizer at um, the fairgrounds to see if that is possibly the same one that they're using. 
or or they or they may say we provide the facility you can get your own license then you could explore them and see how much a license would cost for the kind of things you want okay that's good to know are we ready to move on to old business since we we've been talking about committees sure. Okay, so uh, Julia, did you want to talk about the possible new board member? Oh, it's just a quick update. So I reached out to um, Linda Valik um, after I came back and uh, she was not able to to meet because she just went to the mountains for a couple of days. But she is she said she was going to come back, I think, today or yesterday. So if you wanted me to, I could try and see if we could set something up. But now with things kind of vamping up in terms of COVID, I don't know if we should try for an outdoor person meeting person to person meeting or if we should try a zoom meeting first what what would you prefer i think um i would prefer a zoom meeting but i don't know how others feel well it was going to be you ron me and linda so um, i am fine either way i'm open to either well let's and, start and with who's you. the candidate linda valik we talked about her in uh, in September. So, yeah. you want me to give you a, a reminder? No, 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 okay. no, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. No, I Go thought ahead. you said another name. No, I did not. No, <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm working on it though. But uh, yeah, do any of you have any suggestions for a possible board member? Mm. No, I don't. I no. don't. I just thought I'd check. Okay. Okay, um, Julia, did you want to say more about the CS uh, UMB student project? We wanted to show you what um, the two projects that we have so far. They're still in draft form, but they're already far enough uh, um, along that I can... Oh, you've got some videos for us. Yes, so that's what I thought I'd show to you. Um, mm -hmm. Let me pull... Where is this one? Okay. One second, I just have to set it up. This video will library, which is available. <laughs> <laughs> and now I have to share my screen with you. Let's find this here. Um, I guess it's this one. Okay, hopefully this works when I click on this. Can this you see video it? This will show you how to access and use Learning Express <laughs> Library, which is available free with your Monterey County Free Libraries library. Mm -hmm. No, I can't see it. You can't see it? <gasps> no. Well, we see something, but I don't think it's the it's video. It's not that. You're not sharing that part of your screen yet. And it might be that you have to click that box in Zoom that I forget what it's like. So something of like enhance your computer video, it's, it's towards the bottom of the screen when you click on share screen. Mm. Let me try the other one first. Um, let's see if this one works. I'm going to go to this web page. Can you see this? Yes. Okay. Yes. Ha! Okay, so this is the other one. Um, so by the way, this is our grand writer, Tracy. I just... Um, <laughs> decided to ask her if she would be willing to um, share her story. And um, this was done by a student who was in the uh, film department. And so she made a video to kind of capture the impact that libraries have on some of our local patrons. Okay, so just to kind of give you a heads up. My name is Tracy Townsend Gig. I'm a resident of Carmel Valley Village. I'm a regular patron at the Carmel Valley Village Library branch. And I am here to tell the story of my love for the branch and my support for it. When I was a child, I mean, I carried a little paper card and I would go into the library and we would pick all our books. And then each book had a little sleeve in it with a card and the librarian would write the due date on the card and then file the card and give me the book. Yeah. And now it's just so much easier. It's all electronic. I can order my books online. I can pick them up at the drop off section. I can have them mailed to me. It's really great. I've used electronic resources. So I've downloaded eBooks. 
Um, I also use Library by Mail, which is amazing, which is I order the book and they mail it to me. And then I can just go to the library branch and drop it in the drop box and they sanitize it and send it off to the next person. They quarantine it, sanitize it, and then send it off to the next person. After my father died, I kind of went into seclusion for about a year. And the only place I would really go is to the library. I mean, I would go get myself food and go do stuff, but I stayed home a lot and I read a lot. And um, there are two authors who just helped me laugh and recover during that time. And this was back in 2007. And one is Elmore Leonard and the other is Carl Hyacinth. And I just would sit there and read these very, very dark, but absolutely hilariously funny books and sit in my chair and laugh out loud and think about my dad, you know? So the library has always been, especially the local library in Carmel was in walking distance from my house in Carmel Valley. And so I would walk over there on a regular basis, grab a bunch of books, take them home, read them, and bring them back. And it was just so convenient. And I got to staff library. And it was just, it was really nice. I can't emphasize enough how integral a library is to the health of a community. It's a clearinghouse for information. There are library branches in Monterey County that are being used as emergency shelters. They're doing lunch drop-offs, food pickups. They're doing free Wi-Fi for kids who may not have access otherwise to do their homeschooling. So I really think that libraries are essential for the good health of a community, both for promoting education and just for being a place where people can be together. I think that's it. <laughs> Yeah, isn't that great to just kind of see and, and hear it from the words of a patron of how they, you know, cherish the library and what it means to them. So I'm really hoping we're doing a couple of these projects uh, and videos. And I'm really hoping that we'll be able to share those, you know, with the greater community so that more people feel inclined to just give it a try. Mm. Nice. Why is it EMCFL? <laughs> Just <laughs> wondered. Uh, that's that's our new website. It, oh, it, okay. Well, it will still take you to the same place as Monterey County Free Libraries dot org would, but easier to spell. Mm -hmm. Should I give this other video one more try? I seem to have some trouble pulling it up. <laughs> I'm happy to give it a try, but I'm not sure if I can make it work. This video will show you how to. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the audio works fine. The audio <laughs> works great. I know. I can't believe I can't show you the screen, though. It's just the weirdest thing. So, one more time. Hmm. Okay. Advanced. Is it advanced sharing options? Let's try this. Um, no. Okay, I'm just going to give this a try. And if this doesn't work, then um, believe me, there's another one. You can hear it, but for some reason, I can't show it to you. Okay. Can you see my screen right now? Yes. I can. See, yeah, we can see your screen. There's mm -hmm. that little thing here. I'm going to click on it, and hopefully it's going to play and you can see it. If not, um, I can send you this this particular thing. For some reason, I can't seem to pull it up on a shared screen. This video will show you how to access and use Learning Express Library. You see it? Which is available mm -hmm. free. No, we can no, see it. Just, you just hear it. it. Yeah. yeah. It's frozen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, I am sorry. Um, oh, just send it to us. Will take too long to share it with you. It's a really good video, unfortunately. The student did a fantastic job of uh, showcasing the different things, and I connected him with um, with B to make sure that um, you know it would show the things that our librarians wanted to ha have highlighted for this particular program. And then he went back and edited, and so it's it's really nice. But it's a bummer that I can't show it to you. So I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Maybe next time. Yes, yes. 
Okay, it looks like our last agenda item is a discussion about upcoming board meetings. Yes. Um, so, and thanks to Hillary for getting me on that early. She is the one that um, made me think about that. So, um, January and February, we usually have the issue that our board meeting falls on a holiday because our usual board meeting time is the third Monday. Um, and so I wanted to find out how you wanted to do this for next year. It's very likely it's going to be Zoom meetings. Um, would you mm -hmm. like them on that day? Would you like them the day after, the week after, beforehand? Um, just kind of checking what we should set up. Um, are there people who, who can't make it on other times? I mean, that might be a consideration. No. I, yeah, I mean, I'm okay. Yeah. I think we, we did it a different week or a different we just day. just moved it back a week. week. January 25 and February 22, I'm good. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, so that's after the holiday. Yeah, that works better from actually the later the better because it always hits right around um, when our semester is starting. Yeah. So okay. the 25th is actually, it's our first day of classes, but a lot of the gear up is really the weeks before. So. Before? Okay, so then for January and February, you want to go to the fourth Monday instead of the third to make sure that we don't hit the holiday? I'm good with that. No problem. Great. Okay. Okay. Um, that only leaves us with our... Christmas meeting that we usually have and you know oh. like an informal get together and um, yeah we had it at the lovely uh, Corral de Tierra Country Club last year oh, I remember and thank you Lynette that was really fun I know <laughs> so should we just schedule a quick meeting should we just skip it um, just thought I'd check with you what you think we uh, we should do here I mean we will have to meet to do the budget committee part, but that will be outside of the regular meeting. Um, and I think, well, Aviv might be able to present the financials, but I don't know if you want to have an entire meeting just for the financials, but I'm open to any option that you would like. I can't think of it. I mean, right now, like that's what we're all like trying to think about. I'm yeah. part of two other groups that were like, what, what else could we do? <laughs> I yeah, I think, you know, that so many people will be involved in the budget committee that maybe we could forego um, our regular board meeting and just have the people who are working on the budget work on the budget in December. But uh, uh, that's mm -hmm. just a suggestion. I don't know how the rest of you feel about that. Yeah, um, I mean. that works for me. I'm happy to check with everyone, um, you know, throughout because then it's going to be two months before we basically talk again until January 22nd. So I want to make sure that, um, you know, everyone feels involved. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, maybe we could have our own words and wine. <laughs> In other words, just, <laughs> I just grab a glass of wine and exactly. bring your favorite words in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, I that's mean, a good idea. Yeah, why don't we have our own little, uh, you know, completely optional? It's not a meeting; you don't have to attend. Um, mm -hmm. Sometime in December, and I don't know, like maybe in the afternoon or maybe a mm -hmm. cocktail hour. I I don't know, and yeah, uh, you know, like I think lots of people with their book club these days. You know, the people all mm -hmm. have their glass of wine, and you know, we try to make it a little festive. So, I don't know. I would attend something like that. I don't know if anybody else is interested. Yeah, I would. I, I mean, I've been surprised at how when I've been invited to things like that, I've been thinking, uh -huh, not after being on Zoom all day at work, but then they've actually been fun. Like, I forget. It doesn't feel like work. So, yeah, it's nice. Huh. The idea that it would be a party, a social get together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I will try my best. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'll depend on the day, I suppose. But yeah, I'm, I'm open. Well, maybe Julia could um, send around a, a few dates and just see, you know, um, in what time of day do you think would work best for our little, if we try to do a little words and wine party, a new definition of words and wine. You want to do um, it? 
for me, after four, anytime, if I can schedule in advance, it could be as early as four mm -hmm. but, or even 4.30, something like that. Well, what about 5 p.m.? That's, that's, kind, of, mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of cocktail hour. Or, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so yeah, Julia, if you could just send around maybe a few possibilities or should we just try to pick something right now? Maybe that's even simpler. It might be easier to pick yeah, something right now. That. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's try to do that. Okay. Uh, hold up calendar here. Yeah, so we all have calendars on our computers. Let's see. What day of the week appeals to you guys? I think a Thursday or a Friday, maybe? I think mm -hmm. Thursday might be good because it's, yeah. Thursday? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Thursday? That yeah. sounds good. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at, so we have 3, 10, 17. Those are the, you know, before mm -hmm. Christmas, those are the Thursdays. Yeah. How about the 10th? I was just thinking the 10th might work, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the 10th works. I don't have anything scheduled. So yeah. December 10th yeah. at 5 p.m., I can Five. set up the Zoom. OK. And again, you know, emphasizing that it's, it's really for fun. It's, mm -hmm. not a meeting. it's not a meeting you have to attend. Yeah, it's OK. A chance, you know, to hang out for a while. Sounds good. It's very possible that my children will come and stare at the screen and want to know what's going on and say hi. Just to That's make fine. Oh, That's sure. great. That sounds very appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Just make it sure. Good. Sounds good. Okay. Calendar. Well, perhaps we've uh, concluded our business for today. Is that right? I think we have. Yes. And the meeting is adjourned. And I guess if people want to stick around, they can. But the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank oh, and you. Uh, bye, Julia. Everyone. Yes. Bye, bye. Did you want to? All. Yes. Bye. I had a question uh, for you. Yeah, I'm so sorry if I'm like behind in an email. It's, you. it's, it's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know it can get really tough. Um, so my question was specific to a couple of students that I have that are all in the same class. Um, mm -hmm. I don't see them on my on my particular screen, and and so we're running into this issue that they don't want to move forward unless I I sign their document, but I don't have their document, and I don't even see them in my in my on my system. So I'm not sure who to talk to and and how to move forward with that. Okay, so you're not getting their learning agreements at all to sign. So so it's funny. So I had a couple students who actually. Um, sent me learning agreements and that it, they're part of this. So um, they're all in um, a class that's run by Cassandra Eccles. Eccles. Yeah, that's yeah. CST. Because I'm thinking, do you have, you have students from Cassandra plus Megan O'Hara? Do you have Megan O'Hara students? I have Cinema two, two. And Kristen, yeah. and Kristen Mafalette? I'm going to share my screen. I have this okay. handy dandy, I have this handy dandy. Um, do you see this? <laughs> This is what I made for yes. myself. Oh, wow. So I cannot believe you have 23 students. That is like amazing. You, it's See? like, you well, okay, it sorry, it says 20. Um, I guess a couple more. I, I took some out, but now it sounds like they're, they're back in some of the groups. So, okay. uh, you know, I needed this for myself to be able to actually like make sure that I know what's going on. So the ones in yellow are the ones that I'm having difficulty with, specifically the ones, you know, Timothy, oh, they're, they are all, they're yeah. all in CST, race and gender class in the digital world. Okay. But two are in Megan's class. Oh, well, one person, Nayeli. Nayeli, yes. So, yeah, yeah. And, and there's, yeah, I think the other one got. Three. And then the other person with Christian. Yeah, that's Fernando Zavala. Let me, let me, um, I can click into my. Thing. So the big thing is the other ones are just like scattered here and there, but none of the students from Cassandra's class are showing up on my, on my thing. So um, I'm going to pull it up on the screen right now to kind of show you how my, mm -hmm. um, is it C4? Hopefully, no, it doesn't come up. Damn it. I have to go into my email. One second. I'll find it. Um, is it S4? Aha, uh -huh. here we go. 
see i get like time request for time log but not but you didn't get the learning agreement to begin with it looks like not for those particular students and okay well or i signed something but then it disappeared i can't even find it in my email so i'm just gonna go into my into my little page here and so now i'm going to share my screen again so that you can see who's there and who's not um here we go here we are so you see i mean i do have a large list here of students but as you can see by the classes none of them are the gender race and something something in a digital world and so that's a little difficult for me because i know that there's this one student i, I don't know how to properly pronounce her full name i think it's turi mupae or um but she goes by turi um who whose learning agreement email never came to me mm -hmm. and so i can't sign it right but she's also not showing up in here so i i copied you on that email to the professor but then never heard back really from her or anything. So I just want to make sure that we're not leaving these students in a lurch. Right. So um, if you, you can stop sharing. Okay. Let me go to my email because in the email, do I have the names of the students? Um, let me double check. Because me... this will like the solution will happen in steps. We'll okay. need to get if i can get the full names of the students we'll go into my slp my sense is there's a couple things that could have happened but what likely happened was that they did their learning agreement sent it off but forgot there's this one green button that you think they would see but they don't see it it says finished placement that they have to click at the end and if they don't click it the documents don't get delivered and oh. so we have a number of students who think and it's logical they think they place themselves because they see the learning agreement screen and they see oh your learning agreements out there and it's waiting it's got one of two or zero of two signatures but they don't realize that the document's not going anywhere because they didn't okay so yeah so, i uh, check your email from yeah. november 4th okay. at 405 is when i sent it and i copied you on it and it has the names of the students in yellow you'll find it okay great okay because what um we'll do and i'm actually not working today oh my god i'm sorry <laughs> no but i wanted to come to this meeting Thank um you. but what i'll do what will happen is either me or Renee, like later tonight or tomorrow morning, we'll go and pull their learning agreements and download them as PDFs and just send them to you. Okay. Just so you, you have them. Okay. So you can see, I mean, I think the, the problem is, is that it takes a couple more steps for us to figure, and I don't know how to fit. I think Renee knows, I know, I don't know how to reactivate it so we can resend it out to you. Uh, but worst case scenario is that, I'm going to just send you the PDFs and maybe if you could Adobe sign them and just send them back and then we yeah. upload them. Um, because for whatever reason, students are, even if they bypass that part, for whatever reason, they're able to sometimes access the time log and start sending people time logs without one them of those students the learning has, agreement. One of students has sent me a time log. It's, it's yeah. the one um, who's actually done the video that I'm not able to show you right now, which is an excellent video. I have no problem right. finding the time log, but I don't yeah. even see his stuff. So, right. And so, okay, I see it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I see their names. So yeah, we'll, yeah, okay. The other ones I'm not so worried about. I'll reach out to mm -hmm. Kristen and make sure, you know, yeah. hey, what's up with those? It's just a few then, but this was like the entire group of students from that professor. That's showing up, yeah. I wonder not if they were up. in the, um, which section though? Because Cassandra, who's usually really on it, but she's right now caught in the middle between grading. They work okay. with two different core hosts cohorts at a time, a group that graduates, believe it or not, in like October 30th. So she was teaching that oh section God. that just graduated, but then they have to turn their grades around because they graduate 
And then she's got a, three groups that are still working. And so I suspect she might have disappeared because she's like sort of being like slapped around between oh, having to get grades in and yeah. keep this up. And we still have a number of students that, um, I mean, it's interesting. We uh, There's always a percentage of students, especially towards the end of the term, the ones who really slacked off and didn't look for sites. You know, when we were in person, now we've got that group when we're remote and there's so few offerings. It's really, you know, we had to have an emergency meeting last week where faculty have to come up with alternative assignments because there's just not enough service, remote service for people. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. It, de it depends on the student, to be honest. So there's it, actually one student in that batch, Jonathan or Joshua or whatever, the one that says with mm -hmm. a J, Jonathan. I. I don't know what's up with that dude. I, I'm sorry. I had like, mm -hmm. he missed the group meeting that I set up mm -hmm. for all of them. And then he wanted an individual meeting and he showed up and I showed up and it was a little early. I'm like, oh, we can get started. He's like, no, I don't have time yet. And I'm like, okay. So I mm -hmm. wait until he says he has time. And then he's just, I don't know if he's got like a learning disability. I don't know how to work with him because then he was asking me, like I, I was very much outlining this particular project to him. Here's what you do. You're doing an explainer video. You're going to log into this database. You get yourself an e-library card. You find out how to work this system. And then you're going to, you know, find the software to record your screen, make this video, and then you send it to me. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, very clear. And right, right. I'm going to send this all to you in an email so that you have it written. And his question was, so what are you going to write in the email? I'm like, I don't know yet. I haven't written the email yet. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, so that was one. And then he yeah. reaches out to me again, says, oh, I am trying to log into, uh, you know, to get an e-library card. It says that the username already exists. I don't think I can do this. And I'm like, okay. So wow. you can either reach out to reference and call them and see if they can find out if that's you and, you know, give you a new password or do come up with a different, you right. know, make it, make up a Gmail account, you know, stupid project I have to do at gmail.com or something. Right, 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 right. 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 God damn it. And so, so that's, I mean, I, I didn't send it to him like this, but that's what I was thinking. So I send him, you know, outline these things. I haven't heard from him since. I have no idea if even if 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 he's even like I don't know if he needs additional help if he's you know if he's like on the spectrum to some degree I don't know what else I need to do <laughs> It's possible and you know just with so much just trying to like shift over from in person to remote all these things that happen during service have really fallen through the cracks like it's usually, it's not that it's so common, but at least once a semester, if not more, there are students who are on the spectrum who land in service learning and, and things go awry really fast because the, either the faculty really isn't on top of realizing like, I need to be careful about where they go. Okay. And or the student, because the student, it's still optional in terms of whether or not they self-report. And so if they don't, and then their issues and it's usually around like you know just really difficult social behaviors show up at the site it's the community partner often is the first person to say hello i don't know if anybody's noticed and then the faculty's like oh yeah i kind of noticed that too oh yeah you know um so i'm sorry i mean it's it's possible totally fine that it's that Thought it's also possible alarm. <laughs> like i don't know what to do if, if there's something that i <clears throat> you know, need to maybe do differently. Um, you know, we're coming up to this time where I was planning on reaching out to some of them and see like, hey, since I haven't heard from you in a while, where are you with the project? Do you need some assistance? Um, you know, but I'm not sure if it's me. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, it's like, it's because it's really tricky with the whole like, are, do they have some sort of learning disability? They have to self-report it. And I mean, because you're an off-campus partner, it's not going to mean anything for you if you were to make that assumption and say something. But for faculty, the reason why a lot of times it's just awkward dance and nothing gets done is because, you know, I'm certainly in a depression that like I would get in trouble if I were to suggest to the faculty member, like you might want to say, in fact, after this call, like tomorrow, I'm sure I'm going to reach out to Margaret and go, hey, Margaret, I think I've got, I might have an example of somebody who's struggling at their service site. 
Um, yeah, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm know, willing but, to help. I just, yeah, you know, like I can't do the project for them. That's not helpful. Right, but it could be that, but honestly, when you were describing those behaviors, I met with a student over the weekend that, to be quite honest, I was kind of like, huh, I'm kind of surprised that they're a college student because I, and I was walking through, like just filling out one of the, the, it was the learning agreement on my SLP. And I just was really shocked at the level of questions she was asking, like when she got to the box learning objectives. And I said, well, that's where you want to look at your syllabus. And she's like, well, which sentence would I copy and paste? And I said, well, you would look and see what your class is about. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and on that form, there's even a little black box that pops up for the student that describes, this is what we mean by objectives. And if they just read it out loud, they could figure out like, oh, okay, I need to. And she literally, like there were these long, awkward silences where she wanted me to literally tell her what to write for that, want tell her what to write for her, what she was doing. And I could hear the impatience in my voice because I was kind of like, yeah. well, what are you doing? Yeah. What do you mean, what am I doing? I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> but, and so I, you know, I also, yeah. in this midterm survey we've sent out, like I, because one of our questions is, do you have anything, do you have anything right now that students could do? And I've really appreciated the honesty of the partners. One partner wrote back and said, I have plenty to do because the six students who signed up didn't sh showed up at two meetings and stopped coming. Oh shit. And so no thank you. I'm not willing to sign on for more students because I think I'd rather wait and see if things might change. It seems like and, and, the, and they were very chatter in the end they were like I think students are just having a hard time adjusting to on some students are having a hard time adjusting to online accountability. So I'm going to wait and see till the dust settles. But we've had some partners and these are more of our food bank and I totally understand. They're like, our needs are, we need people packing bags. We cannot take yeah. time coming up with website work no. for people right now. No. It's too dire. Um, so, you know, as you were describing this particular student, there was a part of me that's like, yeah, it could be an LD or it could be just somebody who's like, they're just not at that stage right now where they're like either they could have too many classes or I don't know. It's like, I think we still have a fair amount of students that like they didn't know what they were signing up for with this thing called college. And they're like, what? I have to kind of track things, you know? And then they were thrown this curveball of also being completely online. Um, mm -hmm. So I would, I guess I'm going all around the block to say is that I think you should send the emails that you would be normally sending out to everyone saying, hey, to everyone you haven't heard of, like the, hey, I haven't heard from you, how's it going? Um, what I started doing that I do more of now that I wasn't doing when we were face to face is that I do CC the professor just so they know that there's some communication going on mm -hmm. and I don't experience it. I know if this were more like a work setting, you know, it could be experiences like, oh, you're outing me out to my boss. But I really do know that. Well, first of all, one of the things that we've learned is that there are a lot of service learning professors that are only teaching this async like they're never getting together with their class in real time. I don't think that's the case with Megan and Kristen. No, I, I did not get the sense. Yeah, I don't think that's the case with them at all. And I don't think that's the case with Cassandra. But it's really interesting that there are some students, or there are some students who have like out of six classes, five of them, or they've never met their class. And they're totally floored. Like, I mean, it's just, you know, you combine that and then poor internet, they're just, there are some students that are just like, I give up, you know, I don't know what's happening. Yeah. So um, I've learned that in CCing the professor, sometimes the professor's like, oh my God, I haven't heard from them either. Or the professor's like, I've heard from them, but now I know why you haven't, because they're having all kinds of issues. So I would just go ahead and CC the professor so they have a heads up. Um, okay. and, and I think that will help. And then that way, you might also get some professors reaching back to you saying like, you know, this one and this one I know is good. This person I think is probably dropping or are there, is there anything else? Do you have any other concerns? Um, yeah. Okay. Does that help? That definitely yeah. helps. Um, you know, I just want to make sure that my, my biggest worry is that, um, you know, 
by me not being proactive that in the end the students are going to sit there being left holding the bag you know that they're like but i did all this work and and you know like but it's not yeah. showing the system and she's not signing it because she says she can't see it because that's my thing if i don't see anything from them i'm right. not going to sign anything right mm -hmm. because um right I, I try to be especially with the first couple of students i try to be very clear and i told them mm -hmm. um you know I personally don't care when, at what time you do your your service learning mm -hmm. work. I am interested in the result. Mm -hmm. Here's what I want to see inside this project that I'm giving you. Um, if if you if you can't figure out your timing, and you're just not turning anything into me, I am not signing your paperwork saying that you've done it. Right. That's my only thing where I'm like, nope, I'm not budging from that. Yeah. As as and you shouldn't. Yeah, okay. it's really, yeah, no, no, you shouldn't. And, you know, you're not the only one, but you're few and far between. It's like, it's it's just interesting when we talk amongst ourselves between the community partners yeah. and school partners that really are setting standards. And it's really setting boundaries that the students have to adhere to. You know, the county, Monterey County is doing some stuff and they can't afford not to, you know, they're like, we can't have people here that just consistently don't follow through. Like we, it's yeah. just too much of a drain on everybody's resources so well it's that and then i keep thinking yeah. um when you're in college it's sort of like you're, you're you're testing out work life right so right you need to you can't just if if you always get away with not get doing your work and and not you know applying yourself and sticking to deadlines what are you going to do once you get out of college? You think that that's how life works. You, you're going to lose your job the minute you get it because you, you know, you don't bother to turn in the documents you're supposed to turn in. So, right. You know, it's the practice. But the other thing you should know that, I mean, we didn't put it out there to community partners because why didn't we? Well, the announcement was made a couple of weeks ago, but we probably should put it out there is that um, because there's been so many challenges with remote service, you know, the, the, I think the general understanding, especially on the community, is that students are doing 25 to 30 hours worth of service. But we, the provost kind of issued this degree, decree to all the faculty saying, you do not have to hold your students to 25 hours. It's like, we know this is challenging so that if in the end, the student's only done 15 hours worth of work with a partner, it's up to your discretion to determine if, you know, they were engaged enough. So, mm -hmm. Don't feel on your end that, you know, if students okay. are falling short. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, as I said, I don't care how quickly they're able to bang out the project that I give them. Right. Right. So, right. Me, yeah. I really don't care. But um, I, I have for, for each student, we have a very clear sort of like, um, um, you know, a result that we want to see. So whether it's in most cases, it's either a video in some of Kristen's classes, it's going to be a podcast or a write-up something like uh, it's not physical right now but some sort of result that shows that they have done something that we can then use to promote the library so if we're not getting that i'm not signing the document and but i don't care if it only took them two hours you know i i will sign if they say it you know it, it actually took them two but they say it took them 30. i personally don't care and i'm not going to check it because i got what i wanted out of it does mm -hmm. that make sense Yep, that does. That makes total sense. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, but yeah, well, we'll see. I just wanted to make sure that, that, you know, communication is open and that, you know, that I'm having this issue with all these students. Um, Cause I'm worried that, you know, they're, there's, they're working. Some of them are working with Courtney on um, some very specific social media stuff. And then um, several are making these explainer videos for me. Um, uh -huh. So it would be, I just want to make sure that they, whenever they do do the work, I want to make sure that they get the credit that they deserve. Well, thank, I'm really excited by all the videos that they're doing. That's just really, I had such yeah. A yeah. To show you this particular explainer video. It's so good. I mean, seriously, the student did an excellent job. And if, if you still have students who need placement, if you can find out if they have the capabilities to do something like that, if that. they're comfortable with the computer, I will take them on. Well, if, if there's a way for you, if, yeah, can you try sending me the video file in, in an email? Because yeah. that way to cut to the chase to be like, if you can do this, 
yeah. give me a call. And then like, I will just, we have so yeah. many databases, then I can just assign them a database. Oh, and, okay. And they do yeah. it, right? Because then that's not, I can multiply this project. I mean, we've like 20 databases. There's no problem for me to make, have more students do more videos. I don't care. That's oh my God. Yeah. But I, I can't be running after them. They need no, to be you, like, right. <laughs> so, right. You can't run after them. You can't handle yeah. no, I yeah. totally And I can't, I can't have stuff like, I don't know how to sign on. It says the username is already taken. I mean, like, <laughs> it's funny. Like, and which software were, are they using software from your website or you tell them like use whatever they have available? Um, I told them that's part of what you figure out. Right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but I can, you know, there's one particular student, his name is Timothy Hahnemann, I want to say. Hold uh -huh. on. Timothy Hahnemann. Yes. Um, I, I, he's fantastic. I really have to say. So I'm happy to ask him like, Hey, which, which. Yeah. Because software? if you like that, you could also, because part of the other thing that and we run into it too. It's one of the things I think that's the nature of when you're doing working with so many students on projects is the consistency in terms of product. And yeah. so we've had to like learn the hard way, like, you know, all right, now everybody's doing something that's going to get uploaded to YouTube, period, end of story. And so if you can't do it easily on YouTube, then you need to pick something else, you know? So if exactly. Timothy's software is something that you like, you might as well ask him, what was it? especially I'm going to assume that it's probably some freeware or something that's part of a CSU. Account. Yeah, I mean, I would love to find, I've, I was already planning on actually asking him like, hey, how'd you do it? Which software did you use? Yeah, and really then let that be the standard. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, I can use this video also to, uh, to then show to other potential students because I want to make sure we get an explainer video um for every database that we have it, it's not going to happen this semester but this is going to be a project that ongoing on until we yeah. have basically all of our services covered with a video yeah well this is the perfect covid shelter in place shutdown project it right. really is it you really know, it's is like, it's, it's getting something done that's not yeah it's not glamorous or whatever but it's so helpful and so useful yes and so i was hoping unfortunately the um spanish professor that you connected me with never never responded I was hoping that uh, and that might be another round of students at some point yeah. um, that we have all of them done in English and maybe we can then have other students go in and, and um, translate, them. And translate them yeah and that's one yeah and I, I, I I'm a little concerned because I, I hope nothing's really wrong because that's also not like this particular professor okay. but um maybe she but things for away. translation as long as it doesn't need well, even if it did need a written transcription, depending on the software, it's going to do that automatically. Um, that could, that's something that you could open to, to any service learner that's proficient in Spanish. You know, like yeah. that wouldn't have to be a Spanish class. And we do have a lot of students who um, I think struggle with written stuff, but would feel really empowered if they knew they were translating an instructional video. Like that might be a really important bridge for them. Could be in really terms cool. of yeah so yeah because right now like some of those students I mean I feel like I'm being a little unfair when I was like the students that also can slack off towards the end there's a percentage of those students who it's really clear like English is not their first language and they're just struck like they're struggling in these all online classes things are going a little too fast and their English is not that good yeah I can imagine you know, you know it's funny because that particular student that I was having yeah. the difficulty with yeah um, you know he has a very um, Hispanic last name so I was thinking okay maybe he feels more comfortable with Spanish so I told him if you wanted to make the video in Spanish first because yeah. I asked him are you proficient in Spanish and he said oh yes I am so uh -huh. <laughs> I'm giving him because <laughs> you know yeah. I'm, you know I'm fluent takes... in Spanish right so here I am and I'm like here and this is what you would say for the video and i'm like yeah. I'm going in spanish and he's like oh i think your spanish is bigger than better than mine <laughs> oh no yeah so he might be like again he sounds like he might be in the like you're just not ready right now pile <laughs> oh i'm like <laughs> but yeah but um but that is so good to know yeah well if you could send me that video i'll I send could, you that video right yeah, now. yeah and then i can frame that for our faculty who will send it out to their students and say like hey if you i'm really proud of the work skills, that Student yeah. has done. So it's definitely something that, that would be, would be so very cool. happy to show off. He did an excellent job. He really did. Okay, so. great. And welcome back. 
I didn't oh, realize you were you. back. I'm so out of the loop. There's just it's too much. Oh, don't that. worry. Yeah, it was, it was, you know, it was all the emotions mixed together. The fear yeah. because I didn't know what, what I was supposed to expect. Then uh -huh. the relief to find out my, my dad had a mini stroke and it okay. he was so lucky it only affected um, his ability to lift one of his arms. So he's receiving physical therapy and he's already making great strides. His speech, oh, everything good. else is normal. He oh, is spicy again. So that's all, you know, that was a huge relief. And yeah. then I was able to just, um, you know, now things, COVID is, is, is you know, growing there too. But yeah. Um, for a little while there, we were actually able to kind of live a little bit of a more normal life. Yes, outside mm -hmm. you wear, when you go into stores, mm -hmm. you wear masks, but mm -hmm. museums were open, playgrounds were open. I was oh, able wow. to see my friends. We had like outside meetings and mm -hmm. hung out at playgrounds with our kids. And so, mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was so needed. I mean, my poor kids have barely seen any other kids. And so, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. I'm so glad that the timing worked out because it's yeah. looking like we're about to just really be, I'm just so bummed because I thought I'd be out East by now. And now I'm, you know, I feel like rightfully scared to travel. You know, I feel like I probably shouldn't go anywhere. I mean, it's just, oh, I don't know. Yes, but I have to tell you, the flight back to the States was the most amazing flight I've ever had in my life. Because <laughs> they're not full anymore. I know the flying part is great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, it was, a, well, you know, like those birds that fly across the ocean to transport people, there's like, they fit 300, 350 yeah. people. They had 30 in that plane. <gasps> had rows and rows. Oh, my so, God. Uh, yeah. It was, I've never seen anything like that. And I don't yeah. think I ever will again. It was no. perfect. <laughs> but yeah, it, yeah, I mean, there is, there is the danger, but I mean, we just, um, you wear your mask the entire yeah. time. You only take it off to take a sip of water or eat your food, right. you put it back on and um, you just sanitize the hell out of everything. I mean, we had yeah. like double fist, the hand sanitizers, right? Everything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then it and and then it was fine. And then when we landed in Germany, we um we had to because we were coming out of a, a hot spot area. Um, right. We had to immediately go and get tested, and test results came back to us uh, within eighteen hours. So that was great. Mm -hmm. Um, and they were negative. And then when we came mm -hmm. back, we used the testing that they have going on right now here in Seaside at the high school. Okay, yeah, I've only been to the Cesar Chavez Library because I've flown to D.C. now twice. And yeah, you're right. I felt safest on the plane. I felt super safe. I, I didn't have direct flights. Flying to sh through Salt Lake City, super safe. Flying through Chicago, oh my God, Chicago acted like there was no pandemic. This was like mid-October. Nobody had masks on. Bars were packed. And I remember saying to my sister, if I didn't have COVID, I have it now. It's like just from going through this damn airport. But um, I got tested. So I, I had my second test. Well, I got both tests at Cesar Chavez Library. And um, so far negative. So yeah, it's not the flight so much. I just worry about like once, because my plan was to be near my dad, but not at my dad. But it was more like the grocery shopping. The Once I'm there. If I'm in a state that's peaking, although this is more of the dangerous spot, you know, if I get sick, you know, do I know where the hospitals are? You know, it's like all my health care is here. It's like, uh, you know, so that's it's yeah. more that here. But my sister and them, they just got, my sister got tested and found out she's got antibodies. Like I'm, they were all pretty sure that they got it back oh in March. Oh my God, like, she got it? Yeah, they got really sick. They all, her whole thing went through a whole house back in April. She said, like, she and one of her daughters lost their sense of taste. Another kid lost their sense of smell. She said her husband, they all had bad symptoms, but her husband didn't lose the sense of smell or taste. They got over it. And then fast forward, she said they just got, they're now one by one starting to get the antibody test. And two out of the five so far have tested that they've got, they're negative for COVID and they have antibodies. Holy shit. <sighs> I know. So. Goosebumps. That's yeah, and we're thinking that they all got it at my uncle's funeral that I couldn't go to. That we think that was their super spreader event when my uncle, they all had a, yeah. 
But even, you know, my sister's like, come out for Christmas. But I'm like, you guys are immune, but it would be just my luck to get to New York City and get sick. I'm like, oh, hell no. Like, I just, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just don't know what to do. Oh, shit. Yeah, I know. It's, it's ridiculous. Right? Yeah. And now it's cold outside. I was going to, you know, like, secretly, I was hoping to have, like, <laughs> this whole, like, socially distanced outdoor event in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's a race against time but it might not be too late i mean this weekend might be your last chance i don't know <laughs> they're gonna be warm this weekend this coming weekend? i know it's supposed to rain be it's not supposed to be so nice tomorrow and the next day but i think it might warm up this weekend i think well if it's warm this weekend and you have nothing to do consider yourself invited okay yeah i'm around i will bring bring a bottle of wine <laughs> oh we got you want you want hold on hold on you don't need to here here you, you're gonna see some oh, you guys blood. brought back <laughs> no 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 it's you know my husband has a little bit of an obsession since he oh. uh, you know, used to work with the wineries i'm gonna show you some wine this is just what's visible this is our kitchen oh my god can you see it oh my goodness okay no i won't bring okay i'll bring <laughs> I go with mine. So wait, so were you overseas when you heard the news about our new president? No, 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 no. So oh, you were we, back, you've been back. Oh, okay. We came back on the 28th because we hadn't voted yet and we did not want to not vote. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So we came back and we used the um, ballot drop off in Marina at the library. Oh yeah. That's where I voted too. Oh, that's right. That's what we were all talking about earlier. Right. Yeah. And so we, um, yeah, we dropped it off and then you know, my, my, uh, my husband has PTSD, right? I don't know if I told you about that. Yeah, I do. So he, was, I mean. he was in the Navy. He was in the USS Cole when it was bombed. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't tell you that. Oh, okay. He's not here, so I can talk about it. Um, <laughs> so one of the things that he has from that time is that he has PTSD. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really has been flaring up under Trump because... Oh. Shit that he's been doing and now just this entire election week of all this craziness and how it just played out it just mm -hmm. it was really bad <laughs> so it was good that we were in a sense it was good that we were here because mm -hmm. this is you know our normal space and then yeah. on the other hand it was not so good that we were here because but while we were in germany um, because of the time difference you ah. didn't have this constant ongoing barrage of oh and now he did this and now Trim, trump did blah 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 and now he did this right, bullshit, right? so it's like this constant ongoing daily thing whereas because you know you sleep while everything is ha happening in the states and then you wake up to just one giant ball of shit basically <laughs> it was a little bit more condensed um so yeah anyway <laughs> yeah and unfortunately you know if things depending on how things go or how much things ramp up by him refusing to leave that I, could I'm also be triggering war. I really yeah it's really crazy. bad and that's not yeah it's it's just not it's bad yeah i, I mean honestly i'm so dis disillusioned by the fact that half of the country is after all this stuff that he's been doing is still supporting him feverishly. Yeah. I, I don't understand. Yeah, that's it. what's really depressing. You yeah. know, that's what's super depressing about it all. That I'm like, it's it's not a cliche. Oh, it's a divided country. It's not a cliche at all. Yeah. It's a little scary. Yeah. Yeah. But so definitely right. wine. <laughs> yes, on that note, yes. All right. Well, okay. I'm glad I've got the names of the students. Yeah. I would say in the next like 24 hours, we should have this wrapped up. Totally fine. If not, I'm really good at um, I'm a really good follow upper. And follow -er, yes. In terms of saying, like, yeah. Where's those PDFs? But yeah, I'm. What I'm betting is that they've all done their learning agreements, but they didn't push one extra click, one more button that sent everything. Off. It's possible, but also, um, and I think. Cassandra mentioned that at some point that there, there's, a, there's two different types of agreements. One is like for a short term and the other one is for, I don't know, a regular placement or something. Yes. And so I think that all of those students did a short term agreement. When you're a partner in the database, so they should not have done that. Yeah, because you're one of our official partners, I believe. 
I I think I am. I yeah, mean, so I they so that is the other thing that happens if they click short term when in fact you're in the database, then the paperwork goes in. Oh, but you know, so I mean, I thought I was a partner before, but I never had a site. And so this email about this is your site I received after I had already received agreements. Some from of the short term. Ah, okay. So maybe there's like a like, like an a dividing line. Oh yeah, that's what. Okay, that is probably what happened. So then okay. it would then that would explain why I can't I why I can't why you could see some and not other. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Because. Also, Angela's, not Angela's, Cassandra's students were the first ones we started working with. The other students came weeks and weeks later. Yeah. And those are the ones that you're not seeing, the ones that came weeks and weeks later? Or those are the ones the that first, I can see. The later those, so it's the I first group that weren't in place yet. Okay, thank you. Okay, that helps yeah. with the mystery. So maybe we'll, between all of that, we'll figure that out. Now I'm going to send you that video so you can. Yeah, so I can like send that out. That's perfect. So thank you so much. Sure, thank and, you. Yeah, and I'll check in Friday, hopefully. Yeah, let's see, we'll see how this goes. And then maybe we can at least have a little outdoor fire, wine. That would be nice. S'mores yeah. action or something. Yeah, that would be so great. Okay, <laughs> talk to you later. Bye. Bye. -bye.